If you want to sign up for English class with Vaughn, the easiest thing you can do is sign up for two hours of class a week. But if you really want to improve your English, the best thing you can do is sign up for Vaughn Premium. Seven and a half hours of class a week with the best English teachers in the business. That's the best thing about Vaughn Premium. Plus, a daytown experience at the end of the course. And that's the coolest thing about Vaughn Premium. Vaughn Premium for people who are serious about improving their English. Infórmate del curso intensivo Vaughan Premium en el 911335833. Hola, queridos oyentes. Quería hablaros un poco de los cursos intensivos en grupos reducidos que tenemos una o dos veces a la semana porque, bueno, yo me acuerdo cuando empecé a dar clases en Vaughan ahí por el 2006 y me acuerdo de la dinámica que hemos tenido en esos cursos. Eran pues esos grupos reducidos de cinco o seis personas y claro, al principio nadie ni sabía inglés ni conocía a, a sus compañeros y a lo largo de, de esos tres meses que, que dura ese trimestral, pues se ha formado un grupo realmente bonito. Se, ha formado, se han formado amistades, la gente aprendía muchísimo y, y era una, una manera muy divertida y muy amena de pasar las tardes, pues eso, dos veces o tres veces a la semana. Entonces os animo mucho a apuntaros a esos cursos cursos intensivos o trimestrales que tenemos y si queréis pues llamadnos para más información al 91 133 5833. Ay, sería genial tener un campamento para mis hijos totalmente en inglés y que encima fuesen campamentos temáticos para que se lo pasaran genial caballeros y princesas, Harry Potter máquinas del tiempo, talent show pues si encima no tuviesen que salir de Madrid ¡buah! eso sería fantástico y si además no tuvieran que dormir fuera de casa y pudieran volver el mismo día ¿tendrán algo así los de Vaughan? Lo tenemos, se llama Urban Camps llámanos al 91-133-5832 y te lo contaremos todo 91-133-5832 este verano tus hijos van a vivir un montón de aventuras en inglés. Y sin salir de Madrid, en los Urban Camps tenemos un montón de aventuras y temáticas disponibles y todo sin que los peques tengan que dormir fuera de casa. Tu reserva ya en campamentosvaugan.com Urban Camps. Aventuras en inglés. No las dejes escapar. Disfruta de los Urban Camps en Las Rozas, Colegio Europeo de Madrid, en Aluche, Colegio Santa Gema Galgani, Las Tablas, Colegio Estudiantes, en Metropolitano, Ciudad Universitaria, CMU Isabel de España y en Arganda, Colegio Sai Virgen de la Soledad. Infórmate de los campamentos de Baugan en campamentosbaugan.com. Aquí comienza Inglés Online TV. everybody. Hello and welcome to the show. It's class number 87, Inglés Online TVE is the name of the program, Inglés Online TVE. And we're, what we mean when we say Inglés Online, it's because this is an online course, right? We're following the course, which is on Televisión Española. So if you're listening in Spain, you will know Televisión Española, right? The Channel 2. Uh, and and every morning on Channel 2, we have a course where we teach you English from 7.30 to 8. And you can also find videos of these classes here on our YouTube channel. They are completely free. Inglés Online TVE. Inglés Online TVE is the channel. And you can uh, find the videos completely free. And in addition to those video classes, there are also a lot of um, classes, uh, the, this, these audio companions. And I say, if you know TVE, because a lot of our viewers, most of the, it seems like 50% of the people that connect on YouTube are not in Spain. They're in other parts of the world. We have Fernando writing in. Hello, I'm Fernando from Colombia. 
And then we have Oscar says, Hi, Kyle, I'm back from vacation, ready to learn English with your program. Greetings from Mexico. So we have people from... <laughs> yes, boys. Aquí estamos a tope. Here we are, everybody. <laughs> a little Mexican greeting there for our friend Oscar. Where are you listening from? Who's listening? Send us a message on YouTube. Join the party. Join the fun. Inglés Online TV is the channel. Subscribe and hit the, the you know, the, uh, the hit the subscribe button, the little bell, and you'll get the notifications. And you can follow us and you can... Uh, you can also enjoy the chat and ask questions. Si tienes dudas, pues pregúntame. Lo que sea. Ask me any questions you may have. Okay. And we are live right now. We have Antonio writing in. Says, good afternoon from Extremadura. Valentino says, hi, Kyle. Let it be light. Let it be light. Okay. Valentino is writing in from uh, IT, I believe. Right? From Haiti, as we say. Cool. People from all over the world. There are even a few Spanish people on there. Incluso había gente de España. There are even there were even some people from. Well, there are, <laughs> because we assume with our radio that most of our listeners are in Spain. But I think with the online content, people from all over the world. We have Webster, who writes in from the Dominican Republic. Chema writes in from Cordoba. He says, "I'm going to ask you a question." Is everybody and everyone the same? Yes, it is. He says, hi, Kyle. This is Chema from Cordoba. I'm going to ask you a question. Is this? Is it the same? Everybody? Now, be careful. You can't say, is it the same everyone and everybody? No. Are the words everyone and everybody the same? Yes, they are. Everyone went to the party. Even my mother went to the party. Everyone enjoyed the, the, the dinner. Even my nephew, everyone, everybody, exactly the same. Everybody, everyone, somebody, someone, those two words are the same, okay? The meaning is the same. So take your pick. You can choose. But now I choose to move on and begin our content as we look at today's beginner content. Nivel básico. everybody beginner content i usually have soup for dinner actually that's not true but it but it is the sentence today no es correcto pero es la frase bueno gramaticamente grammatically it's correct i usually have soup for dinner normalmente i normally suelo no i normally i usually now people make a lot of mistakes with used to and usually in fact, my friend Alberto Alonso shared an interesting uh, tweet today about uh, usually used to, to get used to, to be used to. So I used to live in Canada. Antes vivía. This is the what pe people say it often means solía, but, but I, I prefer yo antes vivía, like before I lived. I used to live in Canada. Means it was true in the past and now it's not. And then you have usually, which is like normalmente. O suelo hacer algo. Normalmente suelo comer en casa. I usually eat at home. I usually eat at home. But I sometimes eat in restaurants. I used to eat in my parents' house because my mother used to cook me lunch. I used to walk to school and I used to have lunch with my family and then I used to go back to school afterwards and I used to stay in school until 3 p.m. and then I used to walk home and I used to do, I used to play with my friends and then I used to have dinner with my parents and then I used to do my homework and then I used to go to bed. Used to. In the past. Used to plus infinitive. Past form which has nothing to do with, no tiene nada que ver con, there's nothing to do with repetitive actions. Repetitive actions, I, you, I, or, well, well, it was, it has to do with something that was true, but it has nothing to do with this idea of being accustomed to, 
That is uh, to be used to. Estar acostumbrado a algo. To be used to. I'm not used to this food. I'm not used to this chair. There's a new chair here and I'm not used to it. Me está costando, pues, acostumbrarme a ello, ¿no? It's, 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 uh, I'm finding it difficult to get used to this chair. I can't get used to it. I don't know why, but I just can't get used to it, right? So to get used to is to become accustomed to something. To get is, the sense of to get, I talked about this yesterday, to get in the sense of to become, I'm, mojarse, to get wet, Secarse, to get dry, right? Um, to get dark, to get light, to get better, to heal, right? I hurt my elbow, but now it's, you know, little by little, it's getting better. Está mejorando. It's the process of getting better, of, of, of becoming, right? To get. So to get used to is becoming accustomed to something. And then after you get used to something, you are used to it. So we change from the verb to get to the verb to be. It took me, right? Tarde. The subject is it. It took me. It took me three months to get used to this phone. I got a new, well, not new anymore, but when I got this phone, I wasn't used to it. It took me three months to get used used to it. It took me three months to get used to calling with it. It took me three months to get used to receiving calls with it. It took me three months to get used to sending messages with it. It took me time to get used to uh, connecting to the internet, for example. But now I'm used to it. I'm completely used to it. I am used to calling with this phone. I am used to receiving calls with this phone, and I am used to sending messages with this phone. So to get used to is the temporary transition period of becoming accustomed to something. To get used to. And then to be used to. Es, eso es estar acostumbrado a algo, to be used to it. I'm used to it. I'm used to sitting here. I'm used to this chair. Actually, no, I'm not used to this chair. I'm still getting used to it. I used to sit in a, in a different chair. I used to sit in a lower chair. I used to sit in a more comfortable chair. I am not used to this chair. I have to get used to it. I'm having trouble getting used to this chair. It's going to take me some time to get used to this chair, but eventually I will get used to it. Now, I hope you understand this. If you are used to my accent and if you are used to my teacher's, my teaching style, then you will probably get used to this structure and it will be easy for you. But the word used to was not used in our sentence in the beginner structure, in the beginner example. It was usually, which is normalmente. O suelo. I usually. Suelo. Uh, cenar. Sopa. I usually have soup for dinner. Soup. Soup, S-O-U-P, soup, to have soup. And um, tomar, tomar, bueno, tomamos una sopa. So we have some soup. We're not going to say to take, we're going to say to have. Let's have some soup. Let's have a bowl of soup for dinner. For dinner, para la cena, right? For dinner. And we don't say for the dinner. We say for dinner. Jesus, how are you? ¿Qué tal? Jesus from Colombia writing in. Nice to see you. Welcome. Welcome, my friend. Le okay, I usually have soup for dinner. Let's push forward with today's intermediate content. Nivel intermedio. Intermediate. Intermediate. I couldn't find it. I, I couldn't find anywhere to park the car in the car park. Ooh. Hold on here. Un momento. Hold on. I couldn't find anywhere to park in the car park. That's very British, the car park. In, in, in American English, we say the parking lot. And el parking. You say el parking, right? El, el parking. I like that. But, well, 
the parking lot. So a lot is like a vacant area, like you can buy a lot of land, like un, un terreno. You know, you could say, you know what, I want to buy a lot as an investment. Actually, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about buying a lot in Canada. When I say a lot, it's like una, una parcela, right? Right? A piece of land. Because I think it's usually a good investment. I'm not here to give investment advice, but I think it's probably a good investment to have a bit of land, a plot of land, or a lot. A lot is like a specific parcel. You say something very similar in Spanish, right? Parcela, right? Of, of land, a piece of land, a lot. So the uh, parking lot is el parking. Or in Britain, they say the car park. In the car park. Where, where, where's the car? Oh, it's in the car park. It's in the parking lot. Sure. I couldn't find anywhere to park. I couldn't find anywhere. It means I couldn't find a place. I was searching, but I couldn't find anywhere to park in the car park. So this is a very uh, uh, typical scenario in Madrid. Although there aren't very many parking lots in Madrid. You'd, people park on the street. But I don't own a car in Madrid because I would go crazy. I don't like owning... I don't like having a car... I wouldn't want to have a car in Madrid. I would rather... And it's... You know, I'd, I'd rather take taxis. I'd rather walk, take the metro, take buses, and take taxis. And I believe it's faster when, when you consider... Unless you talk about... If, unless you have your own parking space... If you work in a place where you have your own parking space and you have your own parking space at home and you get in your car and you drive to work and you park in a, speci in a specific space, then okay, that I understand. And especially if you live outside of or work outside of an area covered by, covered with public transportation, then I can understand... Um, uh, why you would want a car. But if you live in the middle of Madrid and you work in the middle of Madrid, you don't need a car. You know, I just take uh, public transportation everywhere and then I take um, taxis when I'm in a rush. Si tengo prisa, if I'm in a rush, we can say. Because of this challenge that we have in intermediate sentence number is there, sorry, class number 87, intermediate. I couldn't find anywhere to park in the car park. Exactly. Yeah, I'm out on the street. I'm looking around. I can't find anywhere to park. I can't find a parking space. And here I couldn't. No podía. I was looking. I spent 20 minutes driving around, but I couldn't find anywhere to park in the car park. But like I said, in Spain, you have, you know, you, you go to areas outside. You go to uh, Alcobendas, for example. You say, well, there's a shopping center and you can, there's a big parking lot or a car park, as the British would say. But in the middle of Madrid, people park on the streets, right? Or they go into these underground lots. But in Canada, they're big, you know, you go to the supermarket and there's a big parking lot. And you can usually find a space, but... If it's busy, maybe maybe on a certain day, maybe you can't. I couldn't find anywhere to park in the car park. All right. Okay, people are writing in. Valentino says, now, Kyle, what's the difference between used to and would in the past? Oh, that's a tricky one. We do use would in the past for repetitive, sort of repetitive actions in the past. It's like saying, I would. I. It's like... It's almost like saying solia. It's like usually in the past. Normally I would do something, but in the past I would, ah, yes, I would ride my bike to school. Now, I used to live in Canada. But when I lived to ca in Canada, I would ride my bike to school. I used to live, it's like antes vivía in Canada. 
And when we talk about something that often happened, that usually happened in the past, that's where we can use would. I would I would ride my bike to school and I would have dinner with my family. Now, I used to ride my bike to school. That's true. But would is even more common in this structure. And that's kind of a tricky one. I'll, uh, let me address that. I will address that someday very soon in the drive time show when I have a little bit more time. Okay, Valentino, but that's a good question. Jesus says, hello from Colombia. Hello, Jesus. Maria Pilar says, hi, Kyle, and hi, everybody. Valentino says, you mean in American English? Do you imply Canadian as well? Uh, That's a good question. Uh, Usually when I say in American English, I mean in North American English in the sense of um, typical, let's say, non-British English. Yeah, I'll say that. Uh, Jose Luis says, hi, Maria, and everybody else. Oh, hello. Hello. Valentino says, uh, the drawing lot as the drawing lot? Oh, a drawing lot. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean there, but okay. Valentino throwing in a comment as well. The drawing lot. I'm not sure what that really means, but okay. Let's push forward, everybody. Let's have a look at today's advanced content. Nivel avanzado. Avanzado. Oh, it's time for the advanced level, everybody. Here we are with the advanced level. Don't you dare take it out on him. He's done nothing wrong. Okay, to take it... Ooh, this is a tough one. To take it out on someone means to punish someone, but to vent your frustration, to spend your anger, to direct your anger and frustration to someone else. Like if I say, right now, I'm so angry, but I am i don't want to say anything to anyone, so I'm going to take it out on this piece of paper. I'm going to take out my anger on this piece of paper. And I do that. Ah. I just took it out. I directed all my frustration. I directed all my anger on this piece of paper and I crushed it. Can you hear that? I took out my anger on this piece of paper. I focused it on that. So the sentence is, don't you dare. It's like, it's like don't even think about it. Don't even think about doing that. Hey, don't you dare do that. Don't do that. Don't you dare. Take it out on him. He's done nothing wrong. Now, we could all say he hasn't done anything wrong. He hasn't done anything wrong. No es culpa suyo. It's not his fault. We have to, to we say fault, right? In, uh, now fault is a noun, it's la culpa. No me eches la culpa. Right? To bl- which is to blame. Don't blame me. Don't blame me because it's not my fault. Porque no es culpa mía. No es mi culpa. It's not my fault, so don't blame me. So echarle la culpa a alguien is to blame. B-L-A-M-E. Blame. Blame. Se escribe. Blame. Blame. Don't blame me because it's not my fault. So don't take it out on him because he has done nothing wrong. He is guilty. Sorry, he's not guilty. He's innocent. He hasn't done anything wrong. Okay. People are writing in. Chema says, how well you speak, Kyle. If you were a politician, I would vote you. Well, thank you. Vote for you, you'd say. Well, thank you, Chema. Valentino, no way, folks. (laughs) Webster, don't take it out on me. Is that correct? Don't take it out on me. Sure. Hey, don't don't take it out on me or don't... Echar la culpa is to blame. But to take it out on is not just, is not blaming. To take it out on someone is to to punish someone or to direct your anger or frustration towards someone, right? 
to take it out on them. Like I had this piece of paper and I was so angry about other things through the day. And I said, you know, I don't want to direct it at anyone else. I'm going to take it out on this piece of paper. And I crush the paper, right? I direct my anger. I take out my anger. I direct my frustration towards it. Okay? To direct it, to take it out on someone. So don't, don't you dare. Don't even, don't even think about it. Don't you dare take it out on him. He has done nothing wrong. And that was our advanced sentence. People are writing in, and I'm, I always do my best to answer your questions. Pablo says, hi there, Kyle. How you doing, man? Good, I'm doing well. Webster says, don't take it out on me. Yes, absolutely. Yolanda says, Kyle, I suppose you would need to drive aggressively to use your own car in Madrid. You're too polite, Kyle. Well, maybe. I don't know. You've never driven. Yolanda, you've never driven in a car with me. So you don't know. You don't know how I am as a driver. Who knows, right? But, uh, no, you're right. I think I am a pretty, I'm a pretty, um, I'm not going to say passive, but I'm not the most aggressive driver. Okay. So, yes. So I think that's probably a, a pretty valid, uh, a pretty valid comment there. Anyway, we're just about out of time. Let's see. Uh, Valentino says he's not going to get away with it. So to get away with, like salir, salirse con la suya. He always gets his way to get, a, to, get, to get one's way, to get his way. But to get away with means to escape unpunished. So that's a bit different, right? To escape unpunished, to get away with something, to get away with murder, to get away with a crime, right? To get away with something. Okay, so here we have, that was class number 87, everybody, class number 87. We're going to quickly go back. The first sentence was, I usually have soup for dinner. Okay. I usually, normalmente, o suelo uh, cenar sopa, to have soup for dinner, to have, hey, what are you having for dinner? What's for dinner? What are you eating? I'm having soup tonight. Okay. I usually have soup for dinner. That's not true, but grammatically correct. Intermediate. I couldn't find anywhere to park in the car park. In North American English, you'd say in the parking lot. I couldn't find anywhere to park in the parking lot. And then finally advanced, don't you dare. Y se te ocurre, right? Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Don't even think about it. Don't you dare take it out on him. He has done nothing wrong. Right? He, he has done nothing wrong. Okay, we're just about out of time. I want to thank you for listening. I want to remind you that you can, you can, I want you to subscribe to the, to the channel here on YouTube, Inglés Online TV, Inglés Online TVE, and we're back every day. Well, we're back tomorrow. Sometimes we do miss occasional days, but we'll always recover, or do our best at least, to cover all the programs and uh, to, we'll be back tomorrow with class number 88 of the Inglés Online TVE course. Thanks for watching, folks. I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.